Mustang guys and Ford guys love manual transmissions. We love rowing those gears. Today we're in the G-Force Racing booth at the PRI show and we're going to talk to you about transmissions. We're going to show you what the Coyote stock guys run. We're going to show you something for super fast, super powerful cars. And we're going to show you what transmission you might want for the street. So I'm going to bring in my main man, Mike Long. He's going to take us through all these G-Force transmissions. We're going to show you what's best for your project. Hi, I'm Mike Long from G-Force Transmissions and Long Shifters. And this is our complete lineup of transmissions here. Here we have a 3650 synchronized transmission, five speed overdriven fifth gear. Synchronized, great for the street. Comes out of an 01 to 04 Mustang with a gear kit that we install, upgraded. Here we have a GF5R five speed transmission made for either road racing or drag racing. Can be street driven, but uh, primarily a race transmission. Here we have a T5 outfitted with our G-Force gear kit. Uh, 295 first gear, stock overdrive, uh, optional available. Here it actually has our gear kit in with the 75 overdrive, but we sell lots of these. Great street upgrade transmission. Here's our G101, made famous by Coyote Stock. Uh, a lot of guys run them in um, all different forms of racing, road race, drag racing, you name it, it's got it. And we offer a vertical gate and an H pattern shifter for it. Here we have the GSR, which essentially has mostly the same gear kit as the 101A, slightly different in some respects, but it is a, a primarily a drift transmission. Today we do a lot of a lot of a lot of circle track racing with it, but it's um, primarily sold as a drift transmission today or road racing transmission. Down here we have a GF4A, which is essentially the same as a G101A but it has a magnesium case, magnesium tail housing, internally identical to the 101A. You see it with an h power shifter. Can be made for drag racing with a V-gate, but most of the time it's got an h power on that one. Here's the uh, T56 Magnum, uh, same as the 6060. It, uh, we make a gear kit, first to fourth dog ring, use the stock overdrives, and it's available for a street or strip. Um, very durable, we have some of the, the quickest six speed records right now for uh, manual, manually shift to six speeds. And here's our GF2000. Drag race only, clutchless box, five speed, one to one fifth gear. Uh, similar to what you'd run in any uh, like complimentator car or um, anything that's gonna be fully clutchless. So Mike, I got a couple of tech questions for you that people might want to know the answers to. So we'll start with the first one. Show us the difference between an H pattern or a conventional shifter and a vertigate shifter. Okay. This here, well, we'll start with the H pattern. This here is an H pattern, which this is the five speed here. Okay, it's a true H, the ball, it doesn't have an H on the ball right now, but it shifts first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, that's an, an H like a traditional street car would have. Hit those gears again. Yep, it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And then reverse is down and over. Okay, it's a push down reverse, it's got a lockout, so you can't accidentally get reverse. That's an H pattern, traditional H on the ball. This here is a vertical gate shifter, also referred to as the V gate, and is the shifted, it's the inline shifter, shifted first, second, third, fourth. Okay, and this, the five speed would be one more front, but this is first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. Neutral, then reverse, is like that. Right, and you can see the differences in the actual shifter part because both have external rails that looks similar, but one has the ability to have the shifter move itself, and this one is running a pin through a gate. Right, it never moves side to side, just front to back. That way there's virtually no possibility of missing a gear at the drag strip. And then here's this T5, so a T5 would be an that H would be pattern style. Traditional H, which it shifts very, it's very short throw on this Pro 5 shifter here. Right, and as cars got into the 80s, as vehicles were manufactured, you could see the rail for the shifting is up through the top of the transmission, as opposed to all this linkage that takes up space in the tunnel. So Mike, on a T5, what is, with your parts, what's the power limit? Is there a power limit? We don't rate them past about 550 horsepower. It depends on the application, tire size, clutch, RPM, uh, but generally speaking, about 550 flywheel horsepower. Uh, roughly 500 to the wheels. Uh, anything over that, we recommend the 3650. 
or if you really want the dog ring, you know, the Mac Daddy unit, go to the Magnum, and that's where you want to be. Please explain to us the difference between a synchronized transmission and a dog ring or a face plated, and then we'll ask you what a clutchless transmission is, because that's something okay. that's like a misnomer, I think, okay. for a lot of people that think there's actually no clutch in the car. Right, right, we'll explain that right now. Here is a synchronized transmission, which you can see you have a slider, a very thin ring there, it's called a synchro ring, then you have the ring on the gear. When you push the slider into the ring, the ring slows the gear down via a cone, and then the, that's like a brake, think of it as a brake, and then it allows the slider to line up with little teeth and engage the gear. That takes time to do that. When you have a dog ring transmission, you have lugs on there, often referred to as dogs, or some people call it face tooth, dog ring, uh, it's all the same. And when you shift it, there's no, there's no delay. It goes right in. It goes right in. There's no brass ring or carbon ring to slow the gear down. The drawback is it, it's noisy when you shift it, but it's great for racing, and um, it's going to go in every time. Right, and you can see these lugs or teeth have an actual angle and then an opposite angle, and that is what locks it in when it's under a load? Correct. So when you're under throttle, that angle, typically on our stuff, is seven degrees. You have to physically yank it out of that gear. So that's why you have to push the clutch in or use a strain gauge for ignition interrupt or just let off the throttle or um, any way to break the power to it. Once you break the power to it just a little bit, it actually, getting it out of gear takes the, you gotta break the power to get out of gear to overcome the seven degree on the lugs. Once it's out of gear, the clutch doesn't have to be anymore and it can go right in the next gear. When you have a clutch assisted, you actually have to break the power getting it out of gear to get it into the next gear. That's the, that, the trick is getting it out of gear, not into the next gear. Right, so a, a face tooth transmission like this can actually be shifted without the clutch if you can physically pull the lever and make it come past and unload the transmission. Right, if you can overcome the load on those lugs right there, if you overcome that, then you can just rip it out the clutch. But if you can't overcome that load, then you need to clutch it or interrupt the ignition. Right, and there's a couple ways to do that. You can have these levers here that are longer, which will give you more leverage, and you can also use a longer physical handle to give the driver more leverage. Right, correct. That's why when most of our G101As, and most of our drivers, transmission we put a longer handle on than traditionally we would have years past on a clutchless trans this tra handle normally would be shorter on a clutchless transmission right. now a true clutchless transmission never crosses neutral you'll see on you notice on that clutch assisted we actually went third to fourth and fourth to third several times but we were crossing neutral in other words it was out of gear for a split second on a true clutchless it never comes out of gear you only ever put it in gear when it's in first Okay, your transmission spinning, it's in first gear. Then under load, this would stay in, remember. You go to second, and then as the transmission turns, it rolls up on the back ramp, because you're over speeding first now. The gear rolls up on the back ramp here, and it kicks out of gear. Same way when you're in second, it stays in second. I'm gonna switch spots with you. Yep. Keep turning, okay. Third gear, and we're gonna go to fourth gear here. Keep turning it, keep turning it. Okay, now watch third gear fly out of gear. Keep turning it once. Oh, I see. It slides off that ramp. Yep, slides off the ramp. And that's what, you never cross neutral. You never take a clutchless transmission out of gear. You only ever put it in gear. It takes itself out of the previous gear. Right, and you can see the different style ramp on the back of the ramp is an actual ramp versus this side of the lug. I'll turn that a little bit. So it's really only locking on one side. Right. So you could, once you come out of the throttle, this could actually come out of gear. Right, Once where, you, that's why you can't street drive, because as soon as you lift off the throttle, it rides up on the back ramps and pops out of gear. So it, a clutchless cannot be driven on the street. A lot of people say they have a clutchless transmission, but it's truly a clutch assisted trans that they either street drive or road race. It is not a clutchless though. A yep. true clutchless never crosses neutral. Mike, so where can we check out G-Force transmissions if we're not at the PRI show? Just go to www.gforcetransmissions.com and uh, give us a call and uh, check out our website. And if you have any questions, uh, don't, uh, don't be afraid to contact us. All right, guys, so there's a look at some awesome racing transmissions, street transmissions, whether you need a T5 or whether you need a full race deal. 
They make all kinds of shifters. They also own Long Engineering, which is their shifter company. Different shifter balls, lots of options for uh, lubricants for the transmissions and rears. Rev and Evan, we're out here at the show, and thanks for watching.